Hey guys, my name's Lucas and welcome to Drum Tip Tuesdays. Alright, so this week we're going to be talking about something that everybody has struggled with, especially this guy, which is playing in 7. So 7 is, uh, my teacher always tells me that uh, no time signature is harder than any other time signature, you're just more used to playing in the easy time signature. So of course we've all got, grown up playing in 4-4 four, four time, 3-4 time, maybe 5-4 time. But when something like 7 comes along, whether it be 7-8 or 7-4, um, it's something that we're just not used to. So, of course, the only way that you're going to get good at it is just by giving it a shot. But there is a trick that I have sort of worked on over the years that helps me get through seven and helps it feel a little bit more natural instead of sounding really chopped up. So, rather than making seven sound like a bar of eight that we've taken a beat off of, um, we want it to have more of a flow than that. Four, four time for us, because we're so used to it, we can feel those phrases in longer phrases. We feel 4-4 we feel four, four time in bars of 4, bars of 8, bars of 16. But when it comes to playing 7, a lot of time it's easy to get caught up with just playing one bar of 7, and then the next bar of 7, and then the next bar of 7. So what we want to do is we want to find ways to sort of make it flow just like it did back in 4-4 four, four time in the time signatures, or in 3-4 time, the time signatures that we're more used to. One way to do that is by having a consistent uh, pulse through two bars of time. So of course in seven, if we play all seven notes, it'll always line up. But if we play every other one, in the first bar, you'll be playing all the on beats, and in the second bar, you'll be playing all the off beats. And then in the third bar, it'll line back up, and you'll end, up, end back up on the first on the first beat. Now it might be, seem a little bit hard to understand, but I'm going to put a graphic up that's going to show you how it lines up when you look at it uh, from the music notation perspective. But if you don't read music, that's okay. All you need to know is that basically what we're going to be doing is playing all the on beats in the first bar, and then we're going to keep that same pulse going into the next bar of seven. So if the time signature was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. You can see that every time I snap, I'm really snapping, if you think of it as a seven, eight time, I'm snapping quarter notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but then in the next bar, I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, and then we're back on again. So the whole thing would sound like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. And anyways, what this does, and as you'll see, I'm going to play an example here for you, is uh, at first I'm going to play it just like chopped up bars of seven. So one constant beat that doesn't change very much, and it only deals with one bar at a time. There's no overarching sort of longer phrases in there. And then the next thing I play is going to be adding the hi-hat. I'm playing just the hi-hat with my foot closed. Um, on the quarter note. So in the first bar it's on the on beats, on the second bar it's on the down beats. So hopefully you're going to hear that in the second example it starts to flow a little bit more. I'm changing to the ride symbol and in, even though we're still in seven, in, the, in seven, instead of feeling it like seven, 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 we're starting to get a feel of more than one bar at a time. So let's take a look and we'll see how it sounds. Alright, so in the next example, I'm moving over to the ride symbol. I'm putting the hi-hat on quarter notes. So in the first bar, they're going to be on the beat. In the second bar, they're going to be off the beat. Hopefully, this is going to give us a little bit more flow. You can be the judge. Let's check it out. Thank you. 
So now you can see we're starting to get a little bit more flow going on, a little bit more longer phrases, and uh, it's starting to sound a little less just like chopped up bars of seven. Now, if you have a very cool cowbell kick pedal or accessory mount for the floor, as, you, as I've got down here, um, you can actually put that same thing, instead of playing on the hi-hat, you can put it on a cowbell, which is, sounds very cool, reminiscent of sort of Dave Weckl funk recordings. Um, so check that out, I'll play it again. And also what I'm going to do now is um, also start varying uh, the kick drum and snare drum patterns. So instead of playing uh, bar, strict bars of seven with those, now I'm also going to be playing longer phrases with them and trying not to play too many downbeats. So when I play, when I say not trying to play too many downbeats, I mean I'm not always trying to put my kick drum on beat one. Because always putting a kick drum or a crash cymbal on beat one is a great way to make sure that you're also still feeling like it's just chopped up bars of seven. So in other words, every four bars, every two bars maybe, I might put a kick drum and beat one, but then in the next bar, I'm gonna try and avoid that in order to keep that phrase moving and, and start to feel these phrases longer. So now you're gonna hear me playing um, a uh, left foot cowbell, uh, playing that same pattern we were playing on the hi-hat, and you're also gonna hear me try and chop up the time a little bit more so that we're not putting kick drums always on downbeats, so check that out. So now the time's a little bit more chopped up. It's definitely not strict bars of seven, the same thing over and over again. It's starting to feel a little bit more natural. All right, now one final application I want to show you of this. We're still going to keep the left foot on the quarter notes on the cowbell. And now you're going to see how you can actually use this as a great way to keep the pulse steady while you're soloing. So playing in seven is tricky because the band that you're playing with is probably also not used to playing in seven just as much as you are. One great thing that you can do when you're soloing to help the band stay together is to keep this quarter note pulse going with your cowbell while you solo. So this is also going to keep the phrases longer in your solo, make it sound a little bit more natural, and help the band stay together. So go ahead and check that out. Cool. So we talked about a bunch of stuff today. Hopefully this is going to make uh, playing in seven a little bit more easy for you. Now I'm also going to post these uh, bass and uh, Rhodes loops on my website. There's going to be a link in the description so you can download the loops yourself, play along with it, and uh, try and get a feel for playing in seven because the only way it's going to get more natural for you is you just play, 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 try playing in seven with a group, play along with the loops. Hopefully it's going to get better for you. So if you have any questions or comments, please post them down in the comments below. I do read every comment. Also check out my website, www.lucasloud.com. I've got all my lessons posted up there. Uh, if you like this video, subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much, and I'll see you on the next Drum Tip Tuesdays next week.